Hi, I'm Mika Minimo, and I'm here to talk to you about disaster risk and resilience um, in the Philippines. Um, I was born in Baguio City in 1990, uh, but because of the Luzon earthquake, my family had to move from Baguio City to La Union and then to Marikina and then to San Juan um, and then finally to Batangas. Uh, that's where I finished my elementary school and high school. Uh, I moved to Diliman uh, to pursue my uh, BS Geology in 2006. Uh, after that, uh, while waiting for the board exam, I continued on to my MS Geology and as I worked as an instructor in the National Institute of Geological Sciences uh, since 2010. After graduating in 2015, I continued teaching in UP Diliman until I got the University of Canterbury um, doctoral scholarship in 2016, where um, that's where I enrolled for the Disaster Risk and Resilience Program in the UC School of Earth and Environment. So for more than a decade now, uh, I've been teaching and researching about geology, about natural hazards, about disasters. Uh, through the geology program, through NSTP, and through the Science and Society program, in the College of Science. So now as Deputy Director of the NSRC, I'm applying what I had in my research, in my PhD research, uh, to help prepare our communities uh, for future emergencies. And as a geology major, I have always been interested in uh, studying natural hazards because that's where I find uh, our profession to be very relevant to the daily lives of uh, Filipinos. Um, I myself experienced hazards all the time. Um, I have my student life always interrupted by uh, cancellation of classes because of typhoons. I also saw the landscape of UP Diliman change after um, Typhoon Milenio in 2006. And then uh, there was once that my SEM break was delayed because of um, our uh, relief operations um, caused by Ondoy and Pepeng in 2009. But um, what made me pursue disaster risk and resilience as a path for my career was actually the events in 2011. So I was in my second year uh, on MS and my advisor, Dr. Mahar Lagmai, suddenly called me said, Mika, gusto mong punta Japan? And I got so excited, of course, as a bucket list in Japan. Eh. And then, uh, then he said, okay, may seminar kasi doon, hindi kasi ako pwede, um, I need to be in New York, ganyan. Uh, so apparently at that time, um, the Philippines is still defending um, the Benham Rice as part of our territory. So of course, that meeting was very important for him. So I was so glad to be the proxy. Um, I was so excited. I prepared my visa. Um, I applied for the visa. I prepared by learning the Japanese conversations, at least in basic. And, but all of those did not prepare me, did not prepare me for this. By September 2011, although the areas were cleared of uh, tsunami debris, all we saw were ruins. Ruins of communities, ruins of train stations, ports, even structures that were supposed to protect homes were destroyed by that tsunami. When I was taking this photo, where all I could see were houses reduced to their foundations, I thought, Lord, let me not see this in the Philippines. But barely three months later, we went to Iligan City to see this. Houses were swept away, hundreds washed away and missing due to, to the flash floods that people did not prepare for. Tropical, Sendong, uh, tropical storm Sendong just proved that Mindanao was not really cyclone free. And before we could write our journal articles about that flash flood, Super Typhoon Pablo happened. Uh, not only did we see extreme wind damage uh, affecting steel structures, emptying forests, flattening agricultural lands, we saw 
multiple landslides. We saw agriculture and agricultural and residential areas swept and buried by record setting debris flows. Even areas which were supposed to be a refuge to people escaping floods. This became a grave for more than 500 people. I was so frustrated as a geologist. So I know uh, my professors, my colleagues, my students were working on maps um, for hazards. And they all uploaded that in online platforms. These were accessible, supposedly accessible to local government units, to the public even. But apparently, our works are not reaching the communities. And I had so many questions. Like, But I was still studying um, my MS then. And my thesis was on Eriga Volcano. So I parked those research questions and plan to return them once I finished my MS. Uh, when I applied for my PhD scholarship, I returned to those frustration questions about the RRM in, in Mindanao. Um, I knew of a um, UC uh, program on hazard and disaster management. So it was under the geology department, but it was interdisciplinary. So I thought it was perfect for me. Um, because of under after the Canterbury earthquakes, um, they uh, designed their program to be uh, interdisciplinary so that disasters could be looked into through different lenses. And they applied this through our trainings, our even the networks that we build as PhD students. There, I became part of uh, Disastrous Doctorates, an academic network of PhD students in New Zealand and Australia. Um, we, all, we were all specializing on disaster-related topics. There, I got to discuss with natural scientists, with engineers, with social scientists. I even met a fashion designer. So we all talk about um, how our fields, our professions, can contribute to minimizing disaster risk. Uh, I love that interdisciplinary um, setting because uh, that's what I saw uh, that's lacking or that is needed in the Philippine setting because uh, our record shows that at any given time, we can have hazards occurring at the same time or occurring in sequence. Um, we have a complex mix of geologic and hydrometeorologic hazards. We have had events triggered by human activities, even many casualties and displacement due to conflict and violence. We had hydrometeorological and geophysical events interacting. We saw these events happen year after year. And as COVID-19 highlighted our interaction with other organisms, can be revisited. Uh, in addition, we have risks that are magnified because of global warming. So risks due to um, the melting of glaciers, rising of sea levels, even intensifying of um, typhoons. As an earth scientist, for me, it's easier to see um, the complexity of hazards, right? Uh, we recognize that in our field the complexity and the dynamics of the earth system. But how much of this knowledge is actually reaching our communities? How are our local government units facing complex and cascading hazard events? Are we coping? Um, the United Nations itself has recognized the need to empower local authorities to improve the RR. So the YOGO framework of action sought to ensure that disaster risk reduction is a national and local priority. Um, we set up uh, institutional uh, frameworks for that. Uh, we have a law and that requires each LGU to build uh, the, the RRM office and also requiring 
the integration of risk reduction into development policies and planning at all government levels. Um, we also aimed at decentralizing responsibilities and resources to local authorities. But in 2015, the AILG reported that many units are still struggling with preparing for disasters. Even with national guidelines, LGUs, like those in Mindanao, have not mainstreamed the RRM in their plans. So some LGUs don't even have plans at all. So it was important for me to see the perspective of our local officers so local and national officers. I interviewed them on uh, their implementation of the DRRM policies and the challenges they face in daily operations, um, especially when hazards are complex or cascading. Based on their experience of eight cyclones, four earthquakes, um, one drought, and one war, uh, we found that the DRRM in Mindanao were affected by three uh, major administrative events and disasters. So first, uh, from 2011 to 2013, there was a paradigm shift when the first year of the RRM Act implementation coincided with the first cyclone experiences uh, in Mindanao for the current generation. So this period resulted in the initiation of DRRM tools and protocols nationally and uh, at some extent the RRM offices at local levels. However, um, as the DRRM offices are st were still undergoing training for these tools, um, events already happened by 2014 to 2016. So this tested the system with hydrometeorological extremes. Um, we have uh, Super Typhoon Haiyan, and then we have the El Nino in 2014 to 2016. So this tested uh, our system. So there were communication tensions, even local conflicts arose, and this showed that there were still many adjustments for the DRRM offices. Um, collaboration and even event foresight were yet to be developed then. And even in 2017 to 2020, uh, this period further highlighted the gaps in the transfer and application of nationally developed DRM tools uh, with those at the local level. So especially during this time, there was a, a change in administration. So after election, after national election, so there was change in administration both nationally and also locally by 2019. So there were many changes that um, LGUs had to undergo again because there is a change in policy and priorities of local officers. Um, but we saw the DRRM offices building up their capacities in phases. So there were those that um, build their offices, um, bought uh, rescue vehicles, equipment, um, even uh, more sophisticated communication tools. We also had structural and technological efforts such as the use of engineering measures and mass seawalls. Um, we also have dikes or um, protection near the river. We, have, we also built memorials for areas that were affected before. Um, we also resettled some of the communities that were um, badly affected. So, pinagbawala na silang bumalik dun sa dati nilang tirahan. Um, we also had online uh, hazard map platforms that were uh, discussed with local government units so that they could use it. But, um, DRRM officers also highlighted um, systematic problems that still remain. So, with hazards occurring in sequence, DRRM offices are often overwhelmed with responsibilities and pressures from their constituents and also from 
national um, officers. So, but they have so much responsibility, but they are underpaid and not regularized. Uh, many officers were still doing jobs uh, of other LGU offices while they are responsible for the RRN. So, merong tourism officer din, merong uh, administrator din ng bayan. So, nago overlap yung responsibilities nila and it became it becomes a burden to them na hindi nila magawa both ng maayos. Um, many layers of government also showed that there, the complexity of communication and coordination. Um, but most significant of all of this are the political priorities of LGU and national law. Um, officials, you can see here yun yung pinaka um, malaki yung challenge para sa kanila. So kapag hindi priority ng local of official, yung elected official, yung DRRM, uh, we expect um, budget allotment is not uh, that big or hindi nadadagdagan yung tao dun sa opisina nila kahit kulang. Uh, this was observed in all levels of government, so from barangay to national, na meron kang uh, problems in capacity because of that prioritization. So, the problem on the shortage in workforce is also linked with funding, diba? So, take note that many units see the lack of funding, um, especially for small LGUs, yun yung main problem. But, as emphasized by officers in highly urbanized cities, so sila yung maraming pera, mas maraming pondo, um, kahit sila, naging problem nila yung funding, not because of uh, the money, but because of the discretion, so allotment discretion of the executive, the local chief executive, and the legislators. So yung mga nasa sangguni ang panlunsod or pang lalawigan. So sila yung Pag hindi pinaprioritize ng no elected official, so possibly hindi din sila mabibigyan ng funding that they needed. Um, so, the prioritization of our LGU officials was very key to um, addressing the concerns in the RRM. And so, that's why we saw both the advantage and disadvantage in having a decentralized the RRM system. There was a facilitation, of course, because it's localized. So there's a facilita facilita facilitation of the shift from the RRM framework when partnered with um, the devolution of other resources and as well, uh, resources we mean including human resources. So, and also there was an automatic allocation of funds as stated in the law. But there was a varied rate and extent of uptake of gu guidelines, tools, and database population by LGU. So, hindi lahat talaga na gagawa yung responsibility nila in, in this um, area. And uh, again, this is because of the priorities of local chief executives. Pag wala din sila pang... Um, experience of disaster in the past, madalas hindi siya prioritize And also, um, there was a lack of local experts. Um, as we can remember, uh, yung DOST, for example, is only until provincial level. So, pagdating na sa municipio, sa mga barangay, uh, wala na tayong mga science experts on the hazards. So, nahihirapan sila in that aspect. And uh, we also that we also saw that there was a development of the RRM networks across the islands, and this was used during emergency. So this was important for augmentation and mitigation of the spread of impacts. So kanya rin may uh, forest fire sa isang area. Na balitaan yun ng kabilang area. Uh, they they would prefer, prepare for it, um, but also we saw that. Because of the added layers of communication, kasi nga maraming layers ang ating gobyerno, hindi ito efficient para sa mga hazards that are fast changing. So for example, meron kang forest fire na nagsispread. Yan. So bago dumating yung message mo from your responders na nasa bundok to the 
officers na nasa camp, uh, lumawak na yung apoy or nagbago na siya ng direction. So, same with typhoons. It, they can escalate or change or de-escalate yung um, intensity. Uh, pwedeng matagal yung um, transfer of information compared to the sudden changes in the hazard. And we also saw that uh, we have a wider reach because of uh, localization or decentralization. Mas maraming tao yung naabot ng information and education campaigns ng mga VRRM offices or ng mga agencies. Um, they also have more um, a wider reach for um, responder recruitment. Um, also, there were higher. There's a higher resolution of the risk assessments. Kasi pwedeng yung LGU na yung mag-produce ng mga maps nila for their own use. Um, the problem is, dahil localized siya, so th there are events, so mga scenarios na malaki, multi-regional, so such as massive or uh, volcanic eruptions, tsunami, uh, mga debris flows, and epidemics, these are not well understood and may be neglected at local levels. So this actually pose uh, devastating impacts in the future. Um, kasi usually, pag nagpa-plan tayo ng, uh, for the LGU, para lang doon sa munisipyo mo. So, yung, kung yung bulk plan, kunyari, nasa labas ng munisipyo mo, possibly you are not gonna be planning about um, a volcanic eruption, but you may be affected. And we see this, um, the non-prioritization of planning and integration of DRRM and climate change adaptation into the local planning has already costed lives in the past. Maraming LGUs na yung nawalan uh, because of that. Uh, disaster impact scenario scenarios also reveal that the lack of planning and zoning ordinances can also lead to devastating impacts. So for example, say in 2045, what if may mangyari ulit na malaking volcanic eruption or meron kang malaking tsunami or mas malalang El Nino? Anong pwede, ma anong pwede natin makita? So in my study for Mindanao, millions of people will be affected in Specifically, for example, sa Chunan, 1.6 million people yung estimated by 2045 to estimated that you would need to evacuate. Diba? Ang daming tao nun. Uh, are we prepared for that? For that um, scale of uh, events? I don't think so. So, uh, there are interventions that we recommended for that in as uh Students, parang pag-isip niya, wala naman kami magawa dyan, ma, mga government problems yan. But actually, uh, there there's a role that we can play. Um, for NSTP students and graduates, our role lies here. So, we can initiate projects that would help in the capacity buildings of our communities. Uh, with our knowledge of community-based DRM, we can impart skills to local partners. Yeah. Here, uh, I had students before who organized um, uh, education and information campaign for um, high school students. Yeah. We also had, we can write stories, create games that can be used for literacy projects. I had students who um, prioritized talking about geology, uh, possibly hazards to children. We brought um, computers, they brought rock samples para mas ma-picture ba ng mga bata yung uh, mga uh, earth processes. Ayan. So, our training for basic life saving will come in handy uh, as part of NSRC. Diba? We would be called for augmentation and response. So, kapag may nangyaring malaking event, um, we are, we, you, me, we are all, uh, we could be called by the state to respond. So yung strategies na and tactical planning na pwedeng matutunan sa ROTC will be important for preparedness and response.
Our active participation in the National Service Reservist Corps is an addition to the enhancement of local social networks as well. And, in, and if we summarize this, our projects could assess first, kanyari, with the community, which one among these capacities needs to be built up. Work first ba? So we need to volunteer. Um, kulang ba sa training sa local communities? So we can con connect the community to OCD, to DOST, and to disaster experts. We can also raise funds with them or donate equipment for rescue, for communication, for drones, for hazard assessment. We can even develop tools or application specific to the needs of the community. Um, just keep in mind that you have to work in the mindset that these projects need to be sustainable for the communities, that they themselves want to pursue, continue, and um, own the project even after you graduate from NSDP. So if you continue on with NSRC, we will train you and equip you with skills so that when you are transferred to the community-based uh, units after graduation, not only will you be prepared to respond to emergencies, but hopefully you'll be citizens who prioritize reducing risks in our own communities. So emphasizing prevention and mitigation so that we would not need to respond, and to recover, and rehabilitate again and again. Yeah. So for your classroom activity, so we can you can visit Project NOAA and Hazard Hunter PH. I will attach here a demo of how you can use the portals to answer the first two questions like, what could be the worst scenario for your community? Pagsabog ba ng bulkan? Malaki bang earthquake? Baha? Uh, landslide ba yung possible mong maging problema? So, and then, then yung nearest facility for your household. Saan kayo pwedeng mag-evacuate? Um, yung facility ba yun ay nasa safe na zone? Um, and then for the next two questions, so does my LGU have a DRRM office? How can I contact the DRRM office in case of emergency? And how can my profession uh, contribute to disaster risk reduction and management? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's start with Project Nova. Let's click that. So you can actually select and use your current location. Yeah, so and dito daw ako banda. You can actually zoom in. Yung sa project no, what 3D na siya. So, oh, yeah. So, nakikita na dyan. Sa so, location ko daw, low flood hazard, flood hazard, landslide hazard, and also storm surge. So, you can also see there, ano yung, pwede mong go entering floods, Yung dapat laman ng survival kit. And then, what are the location of uh, facilities? You can also check the landslide hazard. Anong dapat gawin? As well as in the storm surge. Ayan. Alright. So, you can also look for different other locations. Okay. Piliin mo lang. Mm. Yeah, you can just Google Hazard Hunter. Yung unang lalabas siya sa Hazard Hunter PH. Yeah. You can try the current location just like in Project Noah kanina or go to Map View. Then you can search from there. So, hanapin mo yung bahay mo. Yeah. So, for example, ay Diliman tayo. Kung yari, tayo ay nasa UP, di ba? Sa NIGS. Ito yung aking opisina. Saan ba? Ito. Ang, let's see. NIGS. What if? Ayan. I-double click ko siya. I-calculate niya. Ano yung hazards? Doon sa area. 
Ayan. Ayan. So, makikita natin. Awesome. Prone to intensity aid daw sa ground shaking. For safe sa earthquake, induced landslide, liquefaction, and tsunami. Uh, medyo malayo sa volcano. Pero as we know, in 2020, umabot dito ang ashfall from Taal. Ayan. Prone. Kaya. And then we have um, hydromet hazards, low susceptibility. Ayan. And we see the nearest critical facilities. Ayan. So you can do this. For your um, houses, all right. Okay.